So right here, I'm going to start this haircut off by spinning my client in a full 360. Like, yeah, man, it's crazy. Uh, if you guys do notice, he I actually did a video on him before he had dreads. He wound up combing his dreads out, which took 10 plus hours. Like, it took a while for him to go ahead and get those dreads completely out. But they are out, and he wanted to go down to a cut because uh, this is one of my uh, good friends. He uh, a crim major. And uh, I think he told me like eventually he was gonna have to cut his hair regardless so he'd rather do it now and you know at least get some time to wear his hair before he actually get in industry and um, I just really started off with a number eight guard until my advanced people y'all probably wouldn't care too much for eight guard but for my people that's not as advanced always proceed haircuts with caution you don't know what light spots are under certain spots and if you just go in with a one in hit it the wrong way or it might be a calic in the middle of the head that you don't see and you hit that and trust me once you get it all down to that level it's gonna be drastic on how you see it so right here i have a number three guard out and what i'm doing is i'm just going with um the grain of his hair pattern not with the grain but with his hair pattern grain and because he was in a ponytail for a while his hair is so used to laying backwards that's what his hair considers with the grain even though it's not because with the grain is from the tip of the uh the tip of the back of the uh, head all the way to the front so what i'm really doing right now is consider against the grain when you go literally against the forehead but his hair goes in that pattern. And uh, it's so it's gonna be easy for him to change his hair pattern as well. You're gonna need a lot of hot towels, you're gonna need pomades, you're gonna need maybe wave greases, and definitely a do-rag, and definitely a brush. You're gonna have to work to get that hair pattern to lay the way you want it to lay because um, he had hair so long. So in order for him to wanna wave up or to have that hair pattern that he wants, he gonna have to train his hair. And that's what comes with the territory of cutting your hair. You have to train it to lay down a certain way. So I just got my one and a half guard and I'm just coasting, man. I'm just cleaning up. So I go in with my wall detailers and do my first initial guideline. And what I want to point out, my boy Clipper Grinder did the blade to the wall detailers. I can't wait for y'all to see how these going to hit in the video. They are crazy. So I want to give a huge shout out to my boy Clipper Grinder because he did it with these. Right here I want to show y'all how I do the taper. So I just basically went up like two inches from the back of the neck because my client has hair growing up his back to up the bottom of his neck. And I just wanted to show um, where I started my first guy line. But you guys see the white line because we washed his hair like three or four times before we did this video. So his hair is like super dry. It literally has nothing in it right now we just washed his hair and then dried it you guys can see it better right here as the clippers hit it show like that white ash but that that mean that's that's what happened when the hair is dry and that's what happens when you have hitters as a uh, as liners so i go right into the back taper with my and his masters fully closed and i'm just gonna be pushing this thing a centimeter and a centimeter higher but as you guys can see, I'm just staying real consistent and I'm going to turn the clippers towards you guys so you can see me notch. That's notch two. Because a lot of people say that I fade too quick and they want to see or understand what notches are. So you see me go across with my notch two. Notch three now. As you guys can see, just keeping it real easy and always flick out. You don't ever want to lay your blades flat because if you lay them flat, then you create other guidelines. Don't lay the blades flat. Please, please, please don't lay the blades flat. Just scoop out in a C motion so you can get the same taper all the time. And then now I just drop down to my notch one and two to fade in between just to keep my taper real consistent. And as you guys can see, like the dry spots on the back of his neck, it got like three, four, maybe like five or six of them, maybe even more. But don't let those... Um, don't let those throw your fade off. A lot of people get threw off in their fades when they see these spots because uh, they appear white. But even though they not, it's just the hair is dry. So right here, I got my 116th. And you flick completely out with it and just stay real consistent. Then I'm going to drop my clippers down. As you guys can see, I'm halfway right now. And I'm just staying in that same rim. Drop down to a 2. And then I'm going to drop down fully closed after this just to clean up the bottom part of the taper. 
not putting too much stress on this taper and like i said you see these dry spots don't let them help you get lost in a sauce like just stay on top of the game and remember your guidelines and trust me the fade gonna come out how you want it to so right here i got a number one guard that's fully open but you can see me flicking out the way i'm holding my clippers thumb on the on the body of them but my two fingers is under the guard or under the back of the clipper so when my fingers touch his neck i know when to scoop out that's just something personally that i taught myself when my fingers uh touch the back of their neck i know to scoop out because that mean i'm getting too close to their skin and um if you got those blades too flat once them fingers touch the back of the neck you know to flick out towards you that's how you do it so um Anybody who's going to use my method, shout out to y'all because trust me, y'all fades are going to come out better. Not saying y'all going to have the best fades in the world because it take a while, you know, for you to get uh, a new fading process down packed. But that's how you get the scoop in um, C motion um, when it comes to fading. So right here, I just got a number two guard and I'm just slowly closing it because I'm, I practically got the taper where I want it. I'm just debulking, really. You don't want a lot of heavy areas or dark areas because it's going to throw your final product off but remember as you fade brush or comb keep that hair laid down no matter what the situation is keep it laid down yeah i know it's kind of weird you guys see those dry spots it's like they kind of throwing y'all off I'm telling you, don't let them throw you off. The haircut don't come out how you want it to. Proceed with caution, and I promise you, it's going to take you to the motherland. Trust me. So I'm just playing with my 116th guard, using the tip of my blade, just cleaning up towards the bottom of the fade. Then I go in fully open with my Andes Masters on my taper, and then I'm going to start closing it from there on, just so I can get the blend how I want it. And 116th guard fully open and I'm doing like a smaller fade and I'm look you see me dropping so fast and knocking a fade out is because my comfortability level like I know what I'm doing with this specific clients hair texture you probably won't be able to do this with somebody who has real straight hair but you just got to know your client hair texture and this is the two fully open and I'm just deep bulking Remember, always comb after you uh, stroke the hair with the clippers as well because you want to lay that hair back down. You want to see what's in place and you want to see what's out of place, what's faded and what's not faded. That two against the grain is nice. And then that three, that three against the grain to debulk it even more to have this taper way more ready for when it's at the end. I debulked the front with a three because I didn't want to do it with no one or one sixteenth you could potentially knock down too much hair like my client has a a real good uh grade of hair and you don't really want to don't want to jump in it the wrong way and mess nothing up so right here i just go in with blending the beard fully open and i'm not gonna do like no real crazy blended beard i'm just blending the bottom of the taper with the top of the beard my client still want that fear uh that full beard look so he ain't really want to just lose a lot of his beard even though i feel like uh um a faded beard would have took his haircut to a whole nother level but right here we just playing with the lever man and i'm just cleaning up kind of got a, a lot of loose hairs on the beard and just cleaning those up with a lot of freehand you ain't got to really go too hard just freehand it really this whole game is about confidence so right here i want to show y'all something with this widow's peak his right side has more hair than his left so as you guys can see, I'm going to line this right side up first. And as you guys can see, like, look how closer the hair was to the widow's peak. Now, up here, it's up way higher. So look, this is what I mean. Sometimes you can come into a hairline crooked, but it's up to you to change the outcome. I tell people this all the time. I don't always cut hair the best. I don't always give a perfect lineup. But what I do do is I professionally give somebody an amazing haircut and I make sure when they leave my chair is nothing crooked and everything is straight. So I want y'all to understand that what I'm doing right here isn't considered a pushback because this is his first haircut. You kind of got to draw your first lineup. 
it's still i mean it's straight but it's still kind of crooked a little bit but we're gonna get back to that so i'm gonna do my vertical bars now right now i'm just doing a rough draft on a haircut you ain't gotta always solidify your lines right off the back you do it however you want to this video purpose because we struggle with the light so much like i'm not a fan of this video because we struggle with lighting so much i want a new camera i'm tired of this sony a6000 i'm tired of the lighting that we got but we shot this out of a house this is a house call so you know i just wanted to get you guys some some type of content because it's been like two months since i posted a video but as you guys can see right here i didn't clean this line and all the way up we back in the game we where we need to be right now we are exactly where we need to be right now like i told you guys don't ever get discouraged just because it's not how you want it at the beginning but right here this is my method of lining up i go down straight and create my first straight part by the sideburn then i come up and curve that into the seat as you guys see on the screen pace yourself don't rush this look how i'm holding my detailers look how i'm flowing with them it's like i'm drawing with the tip of the blade y'all know me i love andis i'm not even a wall person but when you pace yourself trust me your outcome is whatever you make it you are literally god when you standing behind this chair no disrespect to anybody you know with those beliefs but you control everything that happens to this haircut if you know when you behind the chair it's this simple like i want people to understand you can create whatever image you want on somebody when you standing behind that chair it's up to you if you rush it you're gonna get a rush result if you take your time and pace yourself of course it's gonna take longer but you are gonna meet that out that ideal look so right here look i'm gonna touch the left side of his head where i lined him up and i'm gonna trace that line all the way across and that's how I get my vertical bars the same length. I always, you know, point myself in that direction. And right here, I just go ahead and just clean up the bottom of the curve. Don't really put too much pressure on it. And then this is just a tad bit part of the neckline. Nothing too major. I was just putting clips in this video because when I first edited this video, it was only going to be like five or six minutes. But uh, I couldn't do that. I'm like I gotta get y'all something real So right now I'm finna go in with some fibers Or whatever Cause he don't really need no color enhancement His hair already still kinda dark But what I would, what I like to do I like to go in and fill it in a little bit more Cause he got that good texture here The color enhancement gonna really pop with his hairline Trust me So as you guys see this thing going And, and, and coming more to life It's getting better and better and better So right here I go in with Kiss Expressions on an applicant brush and this is darkest brown everybody asks me all the time what kiss expressions color i use i use darkest brown it's called darkest brown you don't mix brown with black to make it dark brown no it's called darkest brown and i use this just because it leans towards the more natural look of all of my clients everybody ain't got fully black beards everybody isn't a dark person to take um the black you do it on a light-skinned person with a full beard it's gonna pop out and we all know light-skinned people hair ain't that dark so um you gotta prevent that and um this is just your your most natural look to me i've been using kiss for a while so right here my boy clipper grinder man clipper grinder did his thing on these walls i don't think that he sailed a wall blade anymore he told me he was thinking about relisting because wall has been creating crappy products like the, the you can set the blade perfect or set it even lower than zero gap and it'll still scratch and that's what i hate about wall that they over they i don't know what they did to their blades but when i when i used wall for the first time when i was younger like 10 years ago i was about 12 or 13 they were amazing but now like all these companies are making terrible products if you ask me and that's not a diss to no company but that's me being a barber and me noticing the quality of the products that i'm buying and i'm giving them the money that they that they asking for all i ask for is you give me the product that i'm looking for the fact that we got to do all of these modifications just to make a clip of work that goes to show like the raw materials um the cost materials like something is going wrong 
something going wrong because I don't think they eliminated work because I think they eliminated they cost materials just so they can make cheaper products but still make them to where they usable which I don't care for but right here I'm going in with the easy blade shaving gel and easy blade just dropped a double razors and when I tell y'all these razors are crazy they crazy so I want to point out something. Y'all see like the little red dot up there? That's not from the razor. That's from the clippers. As you guys can see, you got acne on this forehead. So it's easy if you got sharp clippers or clippers that are hitters. They can hit soft bumps. So don't ever get discouraged because you see a little red line. Now, if you see blood dripping and streaming down somebody's face, you might want to look at that again because um, that means you did something totally wrong right here i'm not shaping his eyebrows i'm just cleaning up around him because my client got so much hair on his face he got hair everywhere on his forehead under the curves all on his eyebrows but you know we're gonna get this thing all the way together but that's what that easy blade for man that easy blade is doing the job as you guys can see it's just moving like it's moving and you, you guys can see now like my client is crispy I'm putting them in a the game right now remember stretch that skin pull that razor all the way back but do it with confidence don't do it as you scared don't do it slow do it at a comfortable speed but right here is my final clip of my transformation i couldn't get a last spin around because the clip was so dark and i wouldn't even do that and put that in this video but this is my final look on my client right here so I hope you guys like that. I want to say thank you to all of my subs and everybody that's watching. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Please comment. Please share. And may God bless.